Atalan Park is my tribute to Digimon World, a PS1 classic that I love and also hate. Story is quite simple, there's a park that used to look nice and green, there was flowers, people used to come there and have picnics and walk their dogs, but now it's just a goddamn dump. There's litter all over the place, bottles and plastics everywhere, there's fridges, stoves, TVs, rubble and broken cars for some reason. The river is all dried up and it's dirty, it's polluted and it stinks. It's become a trash land, the critters have mutated into giant hostile creatures. Nobody visits the park anymore and it's going to be closed down and nuked if nothing changes. You start your adventure at HQ where Supervisor Fruit Loops will assign your partner. You are hired as a park ranger to help clean it up and get rid of all the monsters. Your partner does all the fighting while you shout out commands and throw items. If you get in the way you'll be knocked down for a short period and won't be able to assist. Enemies are strong at night so you gotta find a safe place to camp. Explore every corner of the map and find new partners to help you out on your journey. Help out your fellow rangers when they're in trouble and they will help you. Protect them while they fix bridges, electrical equipment and water stuff so that you can explore the rest of the map. Clean up the park and make it 5 stars once again and they will make a statue of you as a job well done. Anyway, where? Okay, this is another Pokemon ripoff type game where instead of battling, you have to do the hardest thing in the whole goddamn world. Talking to pretty girls. <laughs> Um, you get moves like smile, greet, choke, hug. Um, you get experience and as you level up you get better moves. Um, the whole point of the game is to try and get the girls numbers and add them to your Pokedex, i.e. your phone contact list. Or you can just be like me and run away like a goddamn chicken. No more P stands for no more porn. The idea is that the internet is running out of space and uh, porn is taking up a lot of it. So Sergeant Man is like, there's too much goddamn porn on the internet. Told you! We're sending you onto the internet to fucking kill all the porn. Your main weapon is like a RAM, a RAM stick, 256 megabytes of RAM. And then as you like level up in the game, it upgrades to like a 4 gig RAM stick. Then eventually it upgrades to like a 16 gig RAM stick. And um, yeah, that, that's all I got. This, this idea is pretty stupid. Now all, all of these ideas are pretty stupid, not gonna lie. Welcome to the League of Lemons character spotlight for Rue. That guy from Street. So this is pretty much League of Legends, but when you do normal attacks in this game, you build up your special meter. You still have all your abilities. Q will shoot out an Adouken, which is like a projectile. W will be your Tatsumaki, which will move Ryu in a certain direction. And then E is your Dragon Punch or Shoryuken, which knocks back enemies and does like stun or something. And then R, your ultimate, is pretty much like Karma from League of Legends. It just powers up all your other moves, so your Hadouken becomes the Shinku Hadouken, which now does splash damage. Your W is Shinku Tatsumaki Senpukyak, which pulls enemies in and does like multiple hits. And then your E is the Shinku Shoryuken, which hits enemies like high up in the sky, and when they fall, they do like a, I don't know, like a stun thing, I don't know, it knocks enemies up in the sky and it stuns them for a bit. Oh yeah, there's no flash in this game, but you can roll out of the way. Yeah. Quack.
Uh, let me just explain this quickly. Lanis is an Afrikaans word for boss. Also, avenues in Afrikaans is lan. So lan, lanis, yeah. Each boss wears a cape. The fire cape will give you fire powers. Electricity cape will give you electricity powers. You can be fast. You can be strong. You can fly. It's pretty much Jackie Chan Adventures with the talismans. Everybody's fighting each other to get their hands on the capes. It's like the headband from Afro Samurai. There's a lot of capes. And that's why we call it Cape Town. Haha, <laughs> it's so funny. Anyway, let's move on. I wish someone would take the old Mega Man games and reskin it as a Metabots game where you play as Mega be and you can shoot your blaster pew 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 and you can shoot out a missile pew, pew, and you can hold in the charge button pew, to shoot out the metaphors pew, and you verse like eight different people and then when you defeat them you get the metaphors from them I, I, I think that would be a pretty 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 pre, pre, I think that would be a pretty cool game I already recorded a video for this, but nobody watched it, so I'm just gonna do it again. 12 principles has to do with the 12 principles of animation. There's 12 schools scattered around the planet. Each principle can be like a different internet animator, like Jaden, Odd One Out, Oni, or maybe even Zone. And our hero must defeat all the masters to become the legendary animation gangster. Gochi Tame, it's pretty much Tamagotchi. You get a virtual pet and you gotta raise it. It was inspired by Pokemon Crystal and a little bit of Harvest Moon. So you work on a farm, help your grandparents raise these gotchas if you look out the window you can see some of them hey what's up grandpa how are you doing uh here's some early designs for what they look used to look like damn i can't even talk because there's an egg there's a island or something there's uh seasons in the game there's also a day night cycle there's no battling in this game i don't know why that's there uh a clock you come down the stairs doopy doop 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 here's some more concept art for a pig that's something that's also something. Crops have uh, elemental powers for some reason. So do the tools. I, I have no idea why. I think I was high when I wrote this script. I don't know. Hey, what's up, Grandma? How are you doing? So people come to your shop. They ring the, the bell. Ring, ring. And they drop off your gochi. You check on the calendar when they need to pick it up. And when if you do a good job, they give you money. If you go outside, you'll see all the gochis over here. And they all have different statuses. And you got to take care of them and keep them happy and stuff. Like you see, this guy needs medicine. This guy's busy sleeping. This guy's busy dying for some reason. Hey, are you good, bro? Are you good, bro? There's an angry fish over there. This old man has an egg for some reason. So anyway, the old point... Hey, did you poop on the floor? What the hell, bro? The whole point of the game is to make money so that you can repair your grandparents' farm. Because, I mean, the farm looks like trash. I mean, look at that fence. Look at these boulders. There's stumps all over the place. You live in a house. Pretty much a shack, actually. Yeah, there's, there's not enough money. What's up, Mr. Turtle? What's up, Dragon? There's a little fishy in the pond. And then on the right here, you have your uh, tool shed where you keep all your tools. So yeah, get to work, you chicken. Also, gochis can be different colors. If you don't feed them enough, they'll get thin. And if you feed them too much, they'll get super fat. The whole point of the game is to not let the gochis die, bro. Don't let them die, bro. Peanuts versus raisins is pretty much plants versus zombies. But instead of plants, it's peanuts. And instead of zombies, it's raisins. Yeah, it's, it's just a ripple. Or you could turn it into a series of like peanut and raisin, best buddies, going on a sweet and salty adventure. Du -du 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 -du. WWE RPG. Create your own superstar. It can be a guy or a girl. Join NXT with Triple H and battle other superstars to learn their moves. Customize your superstar in the locker room. Go to the gym to increase your stats, bruh. Work your way up the superstar ladder and become NXT champion. Then move to Raw Smackdown. Create your own customizable entrance by moving around the stage, doing taunts, and also add pyro depending on your superstar level. Get squashed by big names like Bobby Lashley. Win enough matches to become the number one contender and compete for bolts at premium live events. Increase your superstar level and master all the moves. Then challenge the head of the table, Roman Reigns, at the grandest stage of them all. WrestleMania. Yu-Gi-Oh! Football. It's pretty much a football card game, but instead of having monsters that you summon to the field, you have players with attack and defense points that you substitute onto the field. Some of them have effects, but we call them skills. Um, instead of magic cards, we can call them like advantage. I don't know, that name doesn't really sound that cool. And traps. Traps are still trap cards. I couldn't think of anything else. Um, some advantage cards can like affect like your attack and defense points, either increasing it or like decreasing it. Um, there are cards that can control the field. Trap cards like Offside and VAR can like negate your opponent's attack. And there are some cards that probably should be banned. Anyways, the point of the game is that you create your deck and then you verse other coaches. So you can like verse Chavi with his Tiki Taka Barcelona deck. You can verse Jurgen Klopp with his Liverpool Rock and Roll deck. Pep Guardiola has his Man City Control and Attack deck. Eric Ten Hag has like his counter attack deck. And then Jose Mourinho, the special one. 
Yes, he's parked the bus there. <laughs> Um, yeah, then you just compete in like different tournaments over a calendar season and then you can like win trophies And then also there's like a special international tournament where you have to play with players from the same country Yeah, and that's pretty much the game. You just, you know um, Big five is pretty much Neon Genesis mixed with Megas XLR or any other mech show But it's based in South Africa, which makes it unique, I guess um, So uh, in South Africa, we have an electricity problem we don't have enough power for the whole country, but that's not because we're using too much power. That's because there's these giant ghoul looking hollows from bleach that are eating the electricity. So what we did is we uh, gathered the little money that we have together and we built some mechs to fight the freaking hollows, bruh. So in this world, South Africa is the only country and we set up our mechs in like different provinces. So we have one in Gauteng, there's one in Bloemfontein, there's one in Cape Town, there's one over here in Durban, and there's one in whatever this area is called over here and all the pilots are obviously like children or like teenagers or something but what makes them special is that they are esports competitors so the one that's like good at hand-to-hand -hand combat used to be like a pro tekken player there's one that's good at shooting maybe used to play like counter strike keyboard and mouse shit there's one that uses like a usb steering wheel ah you get the point why did i call it the big five because in south africa we have these animals called the big five so the mech is supposed to kind of look like the animal um, but then also I wanted the colors of the mechs to correspond with the colors of the South African flag But I kind of looked at the South African flag and um, there's six colors on you, which is kind of a problem I can't call it big six because there's already a show called big hero six uh, It's big big five plus plus one. I don't know man. Somebody will figure it out. I don't know CT Varsity! Dun, dun, dun. CT Varsity! Um, so I studied at a school called City Varsity. Also, it was in Cape Town, so you know, ugh, whatever. So for the lecturers, Pia is like a 3D box rig. Malcolm is a traditional 2D. But then all of a sudden, it becomes like this big buff sheep because he goes to the gym. Denise is a digital 2D. And then Roslyn is the principal. And then for the students, Tiny is so small, she's just one pixel. Johannes is a PNG of a tiger, but instead he has a beanie on. Altus is a Seamus figurine with a PSP. Jonathan is just fried chicken. Deshin is like an evil villain that listens to like death metal. Chloe is vegan. Nal is that knows all about history. Yeah, he was homeschooled. Jason is a FPS hands with a top hat. Shane, that's me. I'm just a vector stick character. My buddy Ryan is like a KOF or Street Fighter 2D pixel character. Chad is like a 3D perfectionist from the animation school. Kyle is just very quiet. Tebojo is an over-detailed animation anime character and just listen to four gorilla songs on loop. My bet is like cutout animation. And lastly, Stevie G is like After Effects motion graphics. Yeah, it's pretty much the amazing world of Gumball. City Varsity, City Varsity, City Varsity, City Varsity. Metabots X Fallout. Many years have passed since the start of the Kilobots versus Metabots war. As a result, the world has turned into a robotic wasteland. Survivors created settlements to protect themselves from the dangerous Robo Raiders. Koji Karakuchi, general of the rebel army and Sumilidon are busy fighting a losing battle. Erika Amazaki and Brass uses newspapers, radios and TVs to spread the news. Karen Junmaya Neutronus travels the wasteland with her bodyguards and helps out wherever she can. Seven time champ Iki Tenreo and Medebi disappeared after their devastating loss to the great of the Kilobots, Cam Kamazaki. Immediately after the shocking defeat, Cam and the Robos launch their attack which caught the world by surprise. There were millions of casualties, including Icky's parents, as well as his dog, Salty. They say this drove him to insanity. Both sides are searching for Icky and Medebi. The rebels want him to help with the war, whereas Cam wants him dead. Your mother, Nayaki, a brilliant engineer and scientist, gets kidnapped by the Robo Raiders. Rumors are that Cam is building a super weapon in an undisclosed location. So you have to scavenge and scrounge the wasteland to find a tin pet to save your mommy. Years have passed and Metabots aren't as shiny and sleek as they used to be. They are also a lot bigger to compete with the deadly Kilobots. Command your Metabot by using triangle to control the head, square and circle to control each arm, and X to move the Metabot to a location. You fight alongside your Metabot using modified Metaparts as guns. Medals are the currency of this world like bottle caps in Fallout. Search and loot for parts that can be sold or use it to repair your own. As parts get damaged they get more and more desaturated. Broken parts have less accuracy and do less damage. Damaged legs will move the metabot slower, where damaging the head will make the robot function cease, popping the metal out. The metabots and kilobots do a lot more damage than your guns, so not having one with you can lead to a quick death. You can only switch parts at a meta station. There are devices there that will teleport your metabot to you. But if you leave your metabot out in the wasteland for too long, by the time you teleport it back, it might show up with missing parts. 
The wasteland is also accompanied by the three members of the Screws gang. Internal conflict led them to disband and create their own gangs. Their followers wear masks of Pepper Cat, Cyan Dog, and Totalizer. They will attack you, but if you help out their gang, you will get your own mask. Recruit the gangs and join the Rebel Army. Or join Cam and the Robo Raiders to take over the Wasteland once and for all. Quack.